Hi, welcome to High Road. My name's Andrew, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to export your song out of Pro Tools. I'm going to be showing you a fairly easy method, first of all, which is just basically to get your song exported as an MP3 or a WAV file, and then I'm going to show you a slightly more advanced method where you can uh, put a plug-in on the master fader and you can boost the volume level up so it's a little bit closer to commercial volume levels. All right, uh, first of all, this is a song that I've already recorded. It's actually a tune off my third album. It's called Questions. And uh, you can see here we've got guitars, vocals, bass and drums. And over here I think there's a couple of guitar solos. So it's a full mix uh, that includes a full spectrum of instruments. And if we flick over to the mix window, you can see that um, I've got lots of different plugins. I've got EQ, compression, effects, and I've adjusted the volume of the various tracks to where I like them. But what we're interested in over here is the master track or the master fader. So this is one I've already created, but I'm going to show you how to do that yourself. So I'm going to just delete this track which hasn't changed anything really. Everything's still the same. Uh, but the master track lets us see what's going out of Pro Tools in terms of volume. So I'm going to go up here to Track, New, and we're going to choose Stereo because this is a, a stereo track that I've recorded. I'm going to go Master Fader and Create. So there it is. There's a blank Master Fader. So if I press Play, you can see here, this is the level of the, to well, the total level of the song that's going out of Pro Tools. And right now it's pretty close to as, as high as it could go. It's not going red, but it's right, right just below the maximum volume I could have without getting distortion or hitting the red zone. If I turn this slider up a bit, we're hitting red and that's going to be distorted and it's not going to sound very good. So it needs to be backed off a little bit, but not so low that there's all that room left. We basically want to use as much of the available volume as we can. So if you like, this is the easy way to use uh, the master fader. Set it, basically set and forget. Put it to a level where you think it's about right. I'm going to guess well, that's my guess. So let, me, let me find the loudest part of the song. I'm just going to um, jump out of here. The bridge looks like it's going to be pretty loud. Yeah, that's quite up there, so I'll pull this back. Yeah, that's, that's probably about right. If that's the loudest part of the song, and it's not distorting, then I think I'm safe. So having done this, I've adjusted my master fader and um, it's about as loud as it can be without distorting at the moment. So let's go and choose our in and out points for the song. So if I zoom in over here to the start of the song, if I grab my hand tool here, my gravity tool, and I'm trying to choose whatever is the piece of audio clip that is furthest to the left. So if I scroll down, there's a bit of my drums. Okay, so that, that basically right here on the timeline is where I want my export to begin. I'm going to zoom back out and then I'm going to go to the other end of the song, the end of the song, and I want to choose whatever is the audio clip that's furthest to the right, which looks like it's going to be the end of the drum. Actually, it's those as well. So by choosing those, and oh, by the way, when I, when I clicked over here, I was holding the shift key so that it would select the entire length from the beginning to the end. So I I'll do this again. I'll click that little bit at the front, hold shift, Sorry, I'm going to go down here. Hold shift and click the end. And that has selected effectively the entire song. So when I zoom out, if you look above, this dark area in the timeline, that shows the start and end point that is going to be exported. So if I zoom in, right there. 
Now, this extra two bars of silence at the beginning, that was my count in when I was recording the song. So that was like my two bars of click before the song starts. That's why there's two bars of silence there. But I don't want to include that in what I'm about to export. So by clicking on uh, the audio clips this way and selecting the entire song start to finish, I'm only going to export the bit that I want. Okay, next thing we're going to go up to the file menu, bounce to disk. You might be thinking, why not go to export? Well, that's not the Pro Tools way. <laughs> I think every other program uses an export menu, but Pro Tools has this thing called bounce to disk, which is a throwback to the tape days when um, you would bounce things to disk. That was the slang term for copying stuff to tape. You would bounce stuff to tape or you would bounce three tracks onto another tape recorder. Um, this slang bounce to is a throwback to very early recording days. And that's what you need to know. Bounce to disk is how you get your sound out. So this is the bounce menu. So here the bounce source, we want that to be our main output. On mine, it's out one and two. Yours might say main one and two, something like that, but that probably will come up as correct by default. I'm gonna choose an MP3 because uh, that's probably what most of you are gonna to want to export. Interleaved, uh, that's the best one to choose for this as well. If you choose multiple mono, you're going to get the entire left-hand signal as one file and the entire right-hand signal as one file, which you don't want. And if you choose mono, it will take all of the song, left and right information, and sum it into one mono signal, which you probably don't want either. And not only that, but it will be about, I think, three to six decibels louder by doing that. Uh, so if you choose mono summed, if you've set your volume volume levels to be just on under the verge of distorting, by choosing mono summed, it will probably go over the top and distort. So just leave it on interleaved. Down here, sample rate for music, 44.1 is the standard sort of MP3 uh, sample rate. 48 tends to be for video. So if you're planning on exporting this and using it in a, a video as background music, that might be a better way to go, but really, it's these days there's not too much difference in in the end 44.1 is it well basically if you've recorded your song at 44.1 then just choose 44.1 here and everything will work out lastly this is where you put your file name so this is as good as anything questions which is the name of the song I'm gonna put uh, YouTube demo now because this is an mp3 oh by the way I'm gonna choose offline because that will make my, it will speed up the export process a little bit. When I click bounce, because I've chosen MP3 as my file type, it's going to take me to a second screen where I can put in my MP3 metadata. So this is not the file name, this is the metadata buried into the MP3 file, so that when you open that MP3 file on, say, an iPad or an iPhone, or some other digital player of some kind. The title, artist, album, genre, all that stuff actually that's buried in the MP3 file comes up. So you can put that data in if you want to here. Um, the encoding speed, I would recommend just leave it on slowest because honestly, it's not that slow. It's <laughs> uh, The difference between f the fastest one being low quality and the highest quality with a slow encode time these days is nothing. Um, so just leave it on slowest and you'll get a better sound. Uh, kilobits, 128 is a good standard kilobit. Uh, essentially at this kilobit number, it will be I think one megabyte per minute. So if you've got a three minute song, it'll be three megabytes on disk. Um, if you choose 160 or 192, basically the sound quality just goes up, but so does the file size. So 128 is fine, especially if it's demos. Um, no lower than 128 though. All right, so if I call it uh, questions, YouTube demo, artist is Andrew Kennedy. Ah. The album is Style Lies. You can find it on Spotify. Comments, none. <laughs> and I think the year was 2017. Okay, so if I do that, off it goes. So this is a 
a 2 minute 53 song, but because I click the online box, it's bouncing this out 11 times faster. So it's, it's, that's why it's going so fast. If I hadn't clicked online, this would probably be exporting much slower. There we go, that's done. So if I go into my um, computer, I can find that MP3 where it, where it was saved. Now, I'm also going to show you how to do that with a WAV file. Go bounce to disk. This is the process you would use if you were trying to, if, if, you, if this was going to be a commercial release and you were going to send it to a mastering engineer, then you'd send it to, to them as a WAV file, absolutely because a WAV file doesn't lose any quality, whereas an MP3 does. So the file type is WAV, format still interleaved, bit depth. Most mastering engineers prefer 24-bit, but if your song has been recorded in 16-bit, then you could argue that you may as well just bounce it out of 16-bit. 16-bit uh, is basically CD quality. Uh, ask your mastering engineer. They may prefer to have the file in 24-bit. Sample rate, um, if you've recorded your song at 44.1 then I would probably just leave it at 44.1 unless your mastering engineer wants something else. They may prefer 96 kilohertz like if you basically give them 24 or 96 like this um, they're not going to complain <laughs> uh, but if you're sending it to them uh, online they might say well drop it down to 4, 41 44.1 kilohertz and then it'll transfer over the internet faster. Uh, at this point I'll leave the file name the same however when I go bounce that's it. I don't get that menu option that I did with an mp3 because a WAV file doesn't contain any metadata. But that's the method you should use if you're sending your track to a mastering engineer. And that's that. Okay so The next thing I'm going to show you is if you wanted to make your track a little louder and you wanted to have it comparable to a commercial mix, let's say you want to send it to someone and they're going to play it on their phone or their iPad or something and you want your track to be about as loud as the other tracks that they've got on their iPad or their iPhone, then you might want to do something else to your track. So let me show you that now. We're going, to go, we're going to click on an empty slot on the master fader and we're going to go to dynamics and choose this plugin here called Maxim. Maxim is a pretty dummy proof uh, maximum volume limiter. What this does is it increases the volume of your track without letting it distort. So if I press play now, you can see here it's generated a little bit of a... Um, a volume curve. Um, essentially this is telling me that most of my musical information is in the lower or the mid to lower dynamic range down here but there's this small, small amount of dynamic information up here which is transients and momentary little bursts of volume probably from drum hits or uh, transients and things like that. So the goal is to shave off these transients which honestly the human ear doesn't really miss them doesn't really hear them anyway uh, which we do with this threshold slider so if I drag this down like that it will shave off the upper region of transient uh, transients and leave us with the bulk of the dynamic range down there I'll show you what that sounds like You can see that my track is automatically louder but doesn't sound that different. It, it hasn't lost any sound quality. It doesn't sound squashed. It sounds fine. However, you may have noticed over here some little red lights. So that is happening because of what I've just done. I've pushed my overall volume of the song up and it has caused some very light distortion. So that's what the ceiling is for. Rather than pushing my volume right right up to the very limit of, of what the track can take, I'm going to back it off just a little bit. I might leave myself a half a decibel of room. Yeah. Actually, I'm just going to type in minus 0.5. There we go. Now I'll get rid of my red alarms. And now you can see that it's just backed it off a little bit. So I'm still getting the, the loudness on the track but I'm not getting any distortion and it's basically protected 
the track from distorting. All this other stuff over here, release, output, dither, I just leave it all the way it is, don't touch it. Um, this is supposed to be an easy <laughs> uh, method. So if you do this, if sorry, if you overdo this, the track is gonna sound awful. If I pull this threshold meter down, it's gonna start making the track sound pretty awful. <laughs> Here it's pumping and it's it, it just doesn't sound right. Um, that's over compression. That's that tends to be what happens with a lot of commercial music these days. It just gets compressed too far and sounds terrible. But because everyone does it, it just sort of we we get used to it. But um, I would probably just shave off the minimum of those upper transients that aren't really that necessary, and give yourself a, about a half a decibel of, of ceiling, and you'll be fine. This is going to be different for everyone's songs, so you have to use your ears and your eyes and uh, see what you think is right for you. But uh, if you were to do this and then follow the same bounce to disc procedures as what we did before, you can make it a WAV file or an MP3, all that stuff is the same. This is just a little bit of a volume secret which you can use to make your track a little louder. Now I should also say this is not mastering. okay? This is one step in mastering, but a proper mastering engineer doesn't use a free plugin like Maxim. They've got much more sophisticated tools, um, experience, and uh, you know techniques of mastering that go way beyond what Maxim can do. This is not mastering. This is just raising the overall volume of your track so that it matches other tracks that you may have in your listening connect, uh, collection. So you can compare and contrast. Uh, if you were going to send this to a mastering engineer, absolutely take that off before you give it to them because they're going to do that themselves and they do it in a much better way than what Maxim can do it. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, if you want to know more about mastering, that's really a different subject. That's a pretty vast area of its own. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Good luck.